Bubble Busters! I'm Alex, age 27. Today is the day I marry my girlfriend who I've been dating for one year, Taylor. I had a good night's rest and when I arrived at the church, all the planner and staff were in panic mode. Apparently, Taylor isn't here. I called her as well, but she wouldn't answer and I would end up in voicemail. All the messages I sent her were unread as well. I searched all around the neighborhood and kept contacting her, but she was nowhere to be found. I couldn't sleep at all, and two days passed when... What do you want? Oh, you finally answered. I replied because you were so annoying. Stop contacting me, okay? Of course I would. Do you know what you did? Stop it. I did nothing wrong with what I do. Are you stupid? Is your head okay? Hey, stop it! Are you trying to fight with me? You could say that. You're surprisingly aggressive today. You're always so submissive. I can't be submissive about what you did. Where are you? I'm in Hawaii. What? Hawaii? Why? Why are you there and since when? I saw you three days ago in the States, right? Yeah, because I left right after that. After that? Do you not remember what we had two days ago? Two days ago? Did we plan something? Wow, well, okay. You're simply stupid. Are you serious? Are you really okay? You're rude today, huh? I'm just going in Hawaii. Why are you so rude to me? I wouldn't be rude normally. You can go wherever you want. You can go to Hawaii, or Bali, or Japan, or whatever. You work too, so if you go with your own savings, I'm totally fine with that. <laughs> Are you stupid? Do you think I'd go to Hawaii with my own savings? That's hilarious! Then whose money is it? My boyfriend, duh. W what Boyfriend? You're panicking. I love it. I'm your boyfriend. Oh. What do you mean, oh? Well, we have different opinions. What do you mean? I thought we broke up already. Wait, wait. We met three days ago, and we didn't talk about breaking up, right? I said bye-bye, remember? That was just a goodbye for the day. Who'd think that was us breaking up? Well, I said it as a breakup, so we're done. Wait, wait. Do you really think you're in the right? Did I do something wrong? Of course you did. We had our wedding planned two days ago. What? You didn't cancel that? Why would I? Because we broke up, duh! <laughs> I didn't know we broke up. We were all at the church that day. You didn't answer anyone's contact. Your parents called everyone they could think of, and your friend went to your house to see if you didn't die. Nothing was there, right? <laughs> this isn't funny. I moved from there. <laughs> Since when? I checked with the real estate agent. And he said you were leaving the place this month. You weren't in the house longer, huh? Yep, because I was with my boyfriend. Your boyfriend is me. You were more of a keeper than a boyfriend. I was in a fight with my boyfriend when I met you. You had a decent salary, you were handsome and tall, and you were very submissive. So I thought I'd just go out with you. So I was your affair, huh? Well, I didn't think so, but I guess you could say it like that. That isn't a normal thing to do. And if you got back with your boyfriend, you'd stop going out with me then. Yeah, I thought so too. But you buy me a lot of things, right? So I thought maybe a little longer. <laughs> this isn't funny. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> stop laughing. Don't be so mad at me. I thought a marriage was too far too, so we broke up, right? You were the only one who thought so. Well, I did my best. I'm going to need you to pay for the cancellation fee, the gifts, everything we bought for our new house, the engagement ring, and the dress you rented for yourself. Wow, you're so cheap! The cancellation fee was almost paid by your parents because they were so disappointed in you, but... Then they can pay for it. My parents' money is basically mine. It isn't yours. And listen to what I have to say. I didn't let them pay. I couldn't make good people like them take responsibility for your actions. Stop acting like a nice person. <laughs> if they said they were going to pay, just let them. Wow, you're horrible. 
I'm going to request payment for everything. You were the one who decided we were having a wedding, right? Why do I have to pay for it? Are you serious? The gift cards can't be reused, but use everything for your next partner. Recycle it, okay? You have everything prepared. Your next girlfriend would be proud of you. <laughs> Recycle it? What is this? A sushi restaurant? I'll have two, please. Stop it! I can't recycle any of it. Yes, you can. They won't know. <laughs> you think about it for a second. How would you feel if someone did the same to you? I don't need to think about that. Why not? My boyfriend is a CEO, so is super rich and isn't cheap. My 10-day Hawaii trip is all paid for by him, too. Huh. Oh, I'll have the dress ordered for me and I'll wear it with my boyfriend, okay? If he's so rich, make him buy one. There isn't any other dress that'll fit me, okay? <laughs> You're cheap, huh? Nope, I'm smart. I don't like when things go to waste. <laughs> Anyways, we didn't get along because we had differing opinions. Good luck with your next girlfriend, okay? <sighs> okay? You too. I'm already fine. I'm super happy. Well, hope that lasts. I was shocked that the person I was about to marry was as stupid as this. I was shocked at first, but I needed to think positively and thought I was lucky to not have married someone like her. Good luck comes sometimes, I guess. But I'm bringing justice to her, though. Hey, Alex! You didn't block me, right? Answer me! What is it? What are these papers? Oh, you got them? Alimony and cancellation fee for $50,000? What is this, a scam? Nope. I checked with my lawyer, and this is the perfect price. I don't get it. I'm not paying this, okay? Then they're going to take your salary, if that's okay with you. I don't work anymore. Plus, I have our wedding next month. I can't have this kind of debt. Plus, I have a baby in my stomach. Well, your boyfriend is a CEO and is rich, right? Tell him what happened and make him pay then. I can't tell him about this kind of blackmail. If you think this is blackmail, you need to talk to him then. If he worries at all about his future wife, he'll do something for you. I can't tell him. Please take this request down. I'll apologize more, okay? I'm about to marry the man of my dreams. I can't let this opportunity get away. I don't care. Alex, please! If you can't talk to him, I'll send the papers to your future husband then, if that helps. This isn't funny! Alright, then pay up, okay? Good luck! Afterwards, Taylor couldn't talk to her future husband about this alimony, and so tried to borrow money using his credit card, but he found out when he received a note from the bank about it. She couldn't make up an excuse for the money, so once she showed him the alimony, he couldn't believe in her at all. So he hired an investigator to check her, and learned that the baby inside of her may not be his own baby. Their engagement was cancelled, along with the wedding, and now Taylor has doubled the alimony to pay up. She's lost the celebrity life she dreamed of, and is living a dirt poor life. Trouble busted! I'm Aaron. This is my wife, Natalia. We got married six years ago. She had a part-time job. When she was at work, my daughter Jane went to a nearby nursery school. And today was Natalia's birthday! My daughter and I were planning a surprise party for her, so I told her teacher that she was taking the day off. I'm gonna drop her off at the nursery school before work. Bye! Okay, thanks. Alright. Bye, Mom! Everything was going according to plan. Now we just wait for her to leave. Then we can sneak back into the house and prepare for the party. Daddy, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> I can't wait! Yeah, same here. This is gonna be great! Yeah! Let's do this! A few minutes later, she left the house, so we snuck back in and started preparing for the party. Alright, she's gonna be home soon. Yay! 
she's going to be so happy. Yeah, you did an amazing job. <laughs> Yay! There she is! Hide! We grabbed the party poppers, turned off the lights, and waited for her to come inside. I heard the door open, but she didn't come into the living room. I heard her talking to someone near the entrance. Is she with someone? I put my ear to the door. I can't wait any longer. Same here, baby. I'm about to explode. Please, give it to me. What the hell? No way! Oh my goodness! I couldn't believe it! I froze up. I looked over at my daughter. She looked upset too. And she started crying. She was only five, but I think she knew something was wrong. We could see them through the glass on the door. I opened the door. <laughs> what? They froze up. Can you wrap this up? It's not what it looks like. Yeah, we can explain. They were trying to talk their way out of this. Who are you? Um, I'm Roger. I work with your wife. She was feeling sick today, so I was just helping her out. Oh, I see. You okay, Natalia? Um, um, I gotta go. Then she ran out of the house. Her face was blushing. Wait for me! Roger ran after her. My daughter and I just stood there in silence. I noticed that Roger left his bag and shoes there. I looked into his bag and grabbed his phone. It wasn't locked, so I called up his wife. Hello? Are you Roger's wife? Uh, yes? Who's this? Sorry to bother you, ma'am. Is everything okay? Well, um, your husband looks like he's sleeping with my wife. What? Yeah, I caught them red-handed. And he left his bag here, so can you come get his stuff? She didn't believe me at first, but she ended up coming to my house to get his stuff. She arrived a few minutes later. Turns out she lived in the neighborhood. So I told her about everything that happened. When she saw her husband's bag, she knew I wasn't kidding. I'm so sorry about this. I'm sorry too. I had no idea. Did you know about this? Well, I knew something was up, but I had no proof, so... Oh? For how long? Um, a few years, I think. But my husband never left a trail, so I kind of stopped thinking about it. But... Wait, a few years? Then I thought about Jane. No, no way. This can't be happening. Jane, is she mine? She has to be! We talked for hours. Jane was still sleeping in the living room. Natalia and Roger were still gone. He probably realized he forgot his phone at my house by now. So why isn't he calling? I decided to call them back here so we could talk about what to do next. My anger meter was well beyond a 100% at this point. I was this close to losing my mind. Where are you? I'm sorry, I wasn't feeling well. You're with Roger, right? Yes, but we're not doing anything. He's just looking after me. I had no time for her nonsense. I told them to come back to the house ASAP. 
You sure about that? So then why are you guys both naked in bed? What? Are you spying on us? Nope. Can't believe you fell for that. How stupid are you? Look, tell Roger that his wife is here. Come home. Now. It was getting dark out, but they were still nowhere to be found. But Natalia's parents showed up instead. I invited them to the surprise birthday party. I completely forgot. When they came in, they thought I was cheating on her with Roger's wife. But then I explained everything to them. Then, around 6 p.m., they finally came back. I could tell that they just got out of the shower from the smell. I wanted to smack them, but I held it together. Wait, Mom? Dad? What are you guys doing here? We were planning a surprise party for you, but... you know. Look, it's not what it looks like. Is that so? Yeah, I'm not having an affair. Oh, okay. But then why is Roger apologizing? Huh? Look at him. He's begging his wife for forgiveness. Uh, what the? He looks pathetic. Then, Natalia tried to talk her way out of it, but it was no use. Then I asked her parents to look after my daughter for a while. Natalia kept trying to deny it, but... Anger meter, 100%! I saw you, Mom! You took off your clothes in front of him! Trouble busters! She finally gave up. Needless to say, we got a divorce and I took Jane with me. I was going to sue them for damages, but first, I had to find out if Jane was mine or not. So I decided to do a DNA test. Either way, I was going to take care of her, because to her, I was the only dad she had. But I had to know. I just had to. A year later, Jane was in elementary school now. Life was good. My name is Darcy. My husband and I got married five years ago, and I'm helping him with his construction business. My husband Tom majored in architecture at university. After working on site for several years, he started his own construction company. He's very talented. I used to work at my husband's company before we got married. After marriage, my husband respected my choice to continue working, so I'm still doing the same job. Oh, I have a class reunion coming up. That sounds like fun. You should go. Really? I'll be home late, though. Is that all right? Of course! Have fun! I was excited about the reunion. We're meeting at a pub. I'm glad I wore casual clothes. Oh my god! Is that you, Darcy? How have you been? Oh, sounds like Jackie's here. Why are you dressed so casually? You should wear something more formal for our reunion. Jackie's parents are wealthy, but she can be annoying sometimes because she tends to show off. <laughs> it's a pub, so I thought casual clothing was fine. Are you going to an opera later with that gown? I can't believe this. I'm wearing a designer brand party dress I bought in Paris. Can you imagine an adult not being able to afford designer clothing? Wow, that's nice. Jackie hasn't changed at all. Since we were young, she's always had this arrogant attitude, so I thought I'd pretend to agree when she shows off. Is that you, Darcy? Jessica! How have you been? I missed you so much! This is Jessica. She's a kind person who's always been composed and modest. We were very close in high school. <laughs> what is that you're wearing, Jessica? I can't believe it! Is something wrong with my clothes? Your fashion sense is a decade old. What you're wearing is too old to be even called vintage. Those are fossils! What? I think her clothes are chic and nice. Lame. Why didn't you guys wear something more fashionable? You're at a reunion, for God's sake. Aren't you embarrassed? Jackie continued to annoy Jessica and me with her audacity. She hasn't grown up at all. So what do you do now, Jackie? Me? I work as a secretary at the same company as my dad. 
my dad told the company how talented I am and got me a job at the company. She got the job using her dad's connections. What about you, Darcy? I'm an administrative assistant. <laughs> a job that requires no special talents or looks. It suits you. It's not about special talents or looks. It's a difficult and tiring job. Hey, Jackie. You can't judge someone just by their jobs. Every job is important. You're speaking for your loser friend because you're a loser too. How is Jessica a loser? You can tell right away. She wears dull clothes and not even a single piece of jewelry. It's so obvious that she's poor. That's so rude. Jessica is. It's fine, Darcy. No need to get upset. Okay. Jessica stopped me before I could finish my sentence. So I listened to Jackie's insults without saying anything. We both felt awful after seeing Jackie at the reunion. We decided to have lunch together the day after. Wow, this restaurant is so nice. Thank you for making the reservation. No worries. I wouldn't come here if I was alone anyway. <laughs> As we were chatting in front of the restaurant, Jackie suddenly appeared from nowhere. Oh my god. Darcy? Jessica? What are you doing here? Hi, Jackie. We're going to have lunch. Have lunch? Where? A cheap restaurant? Not really. We're eating here. Huh? <laughs> really? This restaurant is very expensive. It's not a place for you two. Oh, that's right. Do you want to join us? I already made a reservation. They won't mind if we have another person joining us. That's nonsense. I know you two can only afford to eat at cheap restaurants. Stop pretending. We're not. I know you're jealous and wish you could afford to live like me. That's why you're pretending to be rich. It's painful to watch you trying so hard. Let's ignore her. I agree. We went into the restaurant, leaving Jackie behind. But she ran into the restaurant after us. Wait up. Are you guys seriously eating here? I'll join you. What? After everything you just said to us? I bet neither of you know any table manners. I'll teach you. Fine. Let's eat together then. As much as I hated the idea of eating with Jackie, I had no choice but to accept her because Jessica agreed to it. I made a reservation for two, but they gave us a bigger table since there's three of us. Yeah, we really didn't have to eat with Jackie. Jessica is too kind. I could feel how expensive the restaurant was from its fancy decor and excellent service. Shortly after, exquisite dishes were brought to our table. It looks so good! Oh my god! This is delicious! Um, Jackie? I think you should use the cutlery on the outside first. <laughs> I know that! Stop talking like you know more! As long as you know! I did it on purpose to test if you guys know any table manners! But you don't look like you know. Jackie was embarrassed when we pointed out her mistake. She started to get upset and tried to insult us. Is your husband a construction worker, Darcy? Poor man. He can't do anything else because he's got no brain. Stop that! You don't have the right to look down on my husband's work! Wow, don't get mad. I only stated the obvious truth. You must have made a ton of effort to come here for a fancy lunch. I can't even imagine what you've gone through. I'm not that vain. You two are the poorest people I've ever met. You don't have to come to a restaurant that's too expensive for you just because you want to compete with me. After insulting my friend and me, she started to attack my husband. I couldn't tolerate her anymore. Time to trouble buster her. Jessica, wanna go to the ladies room with me? I asked her to go to the washroom with me. Don't you think Jackie has gone too far? Yeah, I agree. We shouldn't have invited her. I had no idea she'd actually join us. I really thought she would say no. I want to get back at her. Do you want to help me? I have a good idea. <laughs> After we made our plan, we went back to the table. That was long. What were you doing in there? Here's the thing, Jackie. You seem to be looking down on my husband's work. But he opened his architecture firm after graduating from university. I work at his company too. Huh? I didn't want to tell you this. But you insulted him. So I have to let you know. So what? You wouldn't be hired if it weren't for the fact that he's your husband. 
Also, you look down on Jessica so much. But do you know her dad is a president of a big company? What? That can't be true. I didn't think it was necessary to bring up. That's why I never told you. The clothes she wore last time to the reunion were vintage designer pieces. You love designer brands so much, how come you didn't notice at all? It doesn't matter, who cares? You said you work as a secretary at some company, right? Didn't that company go bankrupt recently? What, is that true? I heard it from my dad, he knows about those things. That's, that's not true. I'm the secretary of the company president. You can stop. I know you work part-time as a janitor at that building. Ah! What? My dad's company is in the same building. Thank you for keeping everything clean, Jackie. No, that's not what I do. I work there too. Haven't you seen me before? I sometimes walk past you when you're working too. Walk past me? Why are you bringing this up now? Are you trying to get back at me? I don't judge people by what they do for a living. You're doing an important job as well. So you should stop being so vain and be proud of what you do. Well said, Jessica. Jackie was so embarrassed that her face got red. She ran away in a hurry. Jackie never thought the person she looked down on the most would be the daughter of a company president and know everything about her. It must be hard for her to accept that. Hey, you haven't paid yet. It's okay, I got it. That's very generous of you, Jessica. She just lost her job, so I thought I'd treat her to something delicious for the last time. Oh? I don't want someone who's so vain and arrogant to keep working at the building. Her contract is not going to get renewed. <laughs> That's how it's done, Jessica. The other day, I was walking with Jessica on the street and was shocked by what I saw. Is that Jackie? Jackie came out of a private loan shop. She was dressed in tatters and looked exhausted with unkept hair. Her face looked lifeless, and she became skinny. Seems like she hasn't found a job since she got fired. We won't hear her bragging about her wealth anymore. Jackie's life became difficult since she couldn't find any work after losing her job. I can't help but wonder if she ever thought she would get punished for constantly looking down on people while bragging about herself. Troublebuster! I'm Todd. I'm a university student looking for a job. But job hunting is not easy in the current state of economy. I sent out multiple job applications but got no positive feedback. All I got was thank you and best of luck in the rejection emails. After months of struggling, I finally got an interview. The most exciting part is that this is an interview for one of the biggest companies I've always wanted to join. Interview starting soon. I'm so nervous. I left home early so I could arrive 30 minutes before the interview. The company is located in the central business district. The traffic there is always crazy. Take this! Special attack! Wham! Wham! <laughs> Look at those kids playing. So carefree. Some kids are playing in the park surrounded by office buildings. Suddenly, whoa, 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 watch out! One of the kids ran full speed out into the traffic. Stop! I ran out of the road and grabbed the little boy, trying to get him away from the incoming traffic. Next thing I knew, I was struck by the car. I flew away and landed on the ground while holding the kid tightly in my arms like an action movie. Oh my God, are you okay? Ow. Ah! Oh no, you're bleeding. I'll call an ambulance right now. It's fine. I have an important interview to go to. I'm sorry, you're hurt so bad. Ah, it's all my fault. Interview, my interview. I was barely conscious, but managed to get my phone out to call the company. I, this is Todd. I have a job interview today, but I got into an accident. I can't. I became unconscious before I could finish the call. Ah! Help! Somebody help! The ambulance came and took me to the hospital. I woke up and found myself in a hospital bed. 
Oh, my interview. I have to... You've been unconscious. Doctor, what about my interview? You just got out of danger and you can't go anywhere now. You can worry about that later. How's my injury? What's going to happen to me? You were hit by a car, so we did a brain scan on you and didn't find anything serious. That's great. But you have multiple bone fractures. You need to be hospitalized for some time. What? How long do I have to stay in the hospital? For a few months. It can't be. How am I supposed to find a job now? Damn it! What should I do? I was hospitalized after the accident. My doctor told me to rest in bed. I still had to apologize to the company for missing my interview. So I decided to give them a call. Hi, this is Todd. I had an appointment today for an interview. This is Sam at Human Resources. So you're the one who didn't come for the interview today. I'm terribly sorry for not showing up to my interview. You know how busy we are, right? You have any idea how long it took us to make the decision to interview you? And then, you didn't even come! What do you think you're doing? I'm so sorry. Actually, I got into an accident on my way to the company. Huh? Is that the best excuse you can come up with? You should be ashamed of yourself. Think of something more creative next time. Anger level 30%. What's wrong with this guy? How can he accuse me of lying so randomly? But I can't argue with him. I don't want to worsen his impression of me. It was not an excuse. I couldn't call earlier because I was unconscious after the accident. I'm very sorry about that. So, you think this is funny? I can even smell your lies over the phone. No company will hire a liar like you. Anger level 60%. He was not there. How can he speculate about what happened? Why am I getting lectured after getting hit by a car? Damn, my life is hard. As I said, I was involved in an accident. Have you finished? You're not fit for our company, so don't contact us again. Bye. He hung up on me. I knew I got rejected again. I was in a lot of pain already, but I felt more hurt by what the HR guy said. I felt like crying. Later, the kid I saved came with his family to visit and thank me in the hospital. Thank you for saving me. I'm sorry you have to suffer the injuries. Don't worry about it. I'm still alive. The middle-aged man who came with the kid said, I'm so sorry about what happened. I can't thank you enough for saving my grandson. Don't be sorry. I'm glad your grandson was safe. Actually, I came to apologize and also ask you a question. Ask me? Did you have an interview scheduled on the day of the accident? What? How did you know? I'm the president of Trubus Company. Before I could get a grasp on the situation, he gave me his business card. The company on his business card was the one I was going for the interview. My employee told me one of the applicants didn't show up to the interview that day. And then I heard you saved my grandson from the accident. So I asked for your name and confirmed you were the one who missed the interview. Oh, that's why. That's how I knew you couldn't make it to the interview because you got injured trying to save my grandson. I feel terrible about what happened. It's okay. The HR department already told me I'm not fit for the company, so don't feel bad about it. Again, I'm very sorry. I should probably let you rest now. I'll visit again and thank you properly when you get better. Bye-bye! Get well soon! I still didn't quite get what was going on after they left. I never thought the kid I helped was the grandson of the president of the company I wanted to join. A few months later, I recovered fully and was discharged from the hospital. Suddenly, my phone rang. Hello? 
Hi, this is Sam from Human Resources at Trabas Company. It's the guy who rejected me. What is it that he wants? May I ask what this is about? You're hired! Congratulations, Todd! Right. Wait, what? You saved our company president's grandson. Why didn't you say anything earlier, Todd? Oh. I made a big mistake on your application, and the president was not happy about it. You're now hired directly by the president. Not many people can get this kind of special treatment. I see. Well then, talk to you soon. Like last time, he hung up on me right after he finished talking. The joy of being hired by my dream company was quickly taken over by my anger and frustration against this guy. Anger level 100%. He wouldn't stop accusing me of lying on our last call. But now that he knows I helped the company's president's grandson, he just pretends none of that ever happened? How can he change his attitude so easily after calling me a liar and being so rude to me last time? The injuries on my body have recovered, but my heart won't recover from his vicious attacks. Time to trouble bust him! The company president wanted to apologize to me properly, so we met at a cafe near the company. He said he'll take care of my hospital bill and offer to compensate me with extra money. He also offered me a position at the company. After accepting his offer, I told him how Sam treated me after I got into the accident. Sam has contacted me about the job offer. But before this, he said a lot of awful things to me. Company president got furious after learning what happened that day of the accident, and he apologized over and over. Welcome aboard, Todd. Thank you. It's been my dream to work at Trubus. I'm so excited and can't wait to start. You sacrificed yourself to help others. I'm happy to have a selfless person like you join the company. By the way, how's Sam doing? I already knew what happened to him, but I asked anyway. I fired him. He always had an arrogant attitude towards others. So I decided to teach him a lesson and make him reflect on his behaviors. Oh, I see. I believe in you, Todd. Good luck. Thank you. I'll do my best. I started to work at my dream company. The president's grandson sometimes comes to the company and we hang out like a family. A lot has happened, but fortunately everything turned out fine. Now I'm working at my dream company with a president I greatly respect. I'm so happy that my dreams have finally come true. Trouble Busters! My name is Mia. My older sister, Haley, is a beautiful girl. She has a lot of friends and she's always happy. I'm the exact opposite of her. Unattractive, gloomy, and I only have imaginary friends. Plus, I'm a serious nerd. Haley and I got along very well, and we always had a lot of fun hanging out together. She and her fiance, Mike, are getting married. Mike is a nice man, and he's going to take over the family's construction company. There's a sense of loss for me to see my sister leaving home, but I'm happy she's found a wonderful life partner. Mia, are you by yourself? Hi, Mr. Mike. How are you doing? I'm in my room. What can I do you for? Wow, you even sound nerdy when texting. My deepest apologies. I feel comfortable talking this way. How may I help you? Well, can you keep this a secret from Haley? Do you mind not coming to our wedding? What? I beg your pardon? Can you make up a good excuse for not attending? Just be convincible in front of the family. My friends will laugh at me for the way you look. Haley's guests are all cute, too. What the? Isn't it rude to ask me not to come to the wedding just because you don't like the way I look? Well, you're chubby, you wear glasses, and you have a middle-aged man vibe. You look like you bake, too. I'm not Mrs. Doubtfire. You remind me of the color green. I'm not Shrek. You look like you make ramen. I'm not Takuzo Kadano. What you are saying is extremely harsh. You talk so nerdy, it's disgusting. Your sister and parents are all bright and happy. 
Why are you the only introvert in the family? Are you even related to them? Were you adopted? It's true that I'm a nerd, but you have no right to talk to me like this. My dear sister will be sad if I don't show up to the wedding. Dear sister? You're the definition of cringe. I don't want you to be seen as part of the family. Just don't come to the wedding, okay? You wouldn't want to embarrass your beloved sister on the stage, would you? How do you know that my sister would be embarrassed by my appearance? She doesn't care about such things. After all, isn't it just you that despises me? Honestly, I'm terrified. What if my child with Haley looks exactly like you? I don't want to raise such an ugly kid. No parents will think their child is ugly. By the way, can you resign from your dad's company too? The thought of seeing your face every day makes me not want to take over the company. Wouldn't that be a problem if there was no son-in-law to take over the business? You're too ugly to ever get married anyway. Just do as I say, okay? I've been working at my dad's company ever since I graduated high school. I'm not a laughing stock. It'd be laughable if you quit because of how ugly you are. You're still going to get the severance pay even though it's your dad's company, right? Why don't you give it to us as a wedding gift? It's for your beloved sister after all. Are you really expecting me to give you $2,500 as a wedding gift when you don't even want me to come? Yep, it's all for your sister. No, Mr. Mike. Whatever, make sure Haley doesn't know about this, or else. Even though Mike seemed nice in the beginning, he turned out to be a snake in the grass, speaking to me in the most vicious way. I told my sister everything, anyway, because I was worried that she'd become the victim of psychological abuse after they got married. She got so ferocious at what he said that she decided to teach the worst fiancé ever a serious life lesson. Let me contact him from your phone, Mia. No, he's going to say terrible things to you. Don't worry about it. I'll make him pay for what he said to my favorite sister. So, my sister called him pretending to be me. Even though we look completely different, our voices sound identical. This isn't over, Mr. Mike. My sister is invincible when she's furious. Let the battles begin. Hey, Mr. Mike? Are you serious about your previous messages? Of course I'm serious. You understand everything I said, right? Find an excuse for not attending the wedding, and don't forget about the wedding gift. This is what you should do, Mia. You get it? Even though it's my sister's wedding? It's precisely because of your sister's wedding. How dare you embarrass her and her fiancé? It's exhausting talking to an ugly girl like you. Do you know how hard it is for me to be patient with you in front of other people? Would you stop calling me ugly? But you are. You would have been a half-decent person if you were anything like your older sister. Well, she has an ugly personality, too. Her personality is too strong, and she has a short temper. I'd never marry her if it were not for her looks and the fact that her dad owns a company. What did you just say? You won't get away with this. Well, I'm sorry. I should be grateful, I guess. I get to become a CEO thanks to her, even though it's such a small company. So the way you were behaving in front of my sister and parents, it was all an act? Of course. People should live smart. Mikey, I heard you loud and clear. Hmm? Surprise! It's your fiance, Haley. So this is what you really think. Wait, wait, what? No, Haley, it was a misunderstanding! Was it? Where exactly was the misunderstanding? Mia and I are close! We roast each other all the time! Mia will never badmouth her family behind their backs. How dare you say that I have an ugly personality, even though I have the looks of an angel? Well, I didn't say it to that extent. Anyways, I've recorded our conversation as evidence. I'm going to show it to my parents, and tomorrow I'll let your parents hear it too. No, please, don't do that! I'll apologize to both you and Mia! An apology is far from enough. The wedding is canceled. Wait, hold on! I left my previous job to join your dad's company! You can't call off the wedding now! Why can't I? You think you can still take over our family business after insulting my sister like that? My dad's company hires people regardless of age, gender, and disability. A person like you, who judges a book by its cover, is not suitable for the company. Can you pass the phone to Mia? Let me apologize to her. She's going to forgive me. It's not up to you to decide. Mia, is there anything else you want to say? I don't even want to talk to him. Well, we're done here. Bye, Mike. No, Haley, Mia! Hey, don't ignore me. Say something. I'm sorry. Please marry me. 
The next day, my parents and sister met with his parents and showed them the recorded conversation. His parents were devastated and apologized over and over. Mike ended up draining all his savings to pay for the cancellation of the wedding, the honeymoon, and the new home. In the meanwhile, my sister decided to take over the company herself, so she started working at the company as our dad's assistant to learn how to run the business. As for me, I'm still the same nerd, living my happy, nerdy life. Trouble Busters. Hi, I'm Charlie. I work at a company specializing in interior furnishing services. I've always been passionate about furniture and space planning. So I'm thrilled to work in an environment surrounded by the things I love. My cousin Hillary, who works at a high-end furniture store, has the same passion as me. Charlie, do you have a minute? Yes, what is it, Mark? This is my boss, Mark. Mark is a dandy man who's exceptionally talented in interior decorating. I've always admired his furniture choice and placement. I'm going to a furniture store in the city center. Would you like to come with me? Of course! Which store are we going to? The name of the store is Trubus Furniture. Oh, my cousin works there! Sounds great! Let's go! So my boss and I went to the high-end furniture store my cousin works at. Hi, welcome. Oh, hey, Charlie. Hey, work brought me here today. Great, we've just received some beautiful pieces. Feel free to take a look. My boss and I started to look at the furniture. Wow, look at the table legs. The curves and lines are so glamorous and sexy. Is he okay? Mark is not always like this, only when he sees great designs. <laughs> this wood, the way it feels. Such a cute chair. It's so nice. I'll go to the second floor. Mark was in a daze, so I decided to check out the second floor first. I noticed a lady and a young boy on the second floor. The boy was about seven years old. His mother, who seemed very young, stood there while her son ran around. Wow, this bed is huge! The boy kept jumping up and down on one of the beds. But the mother didn't seem to care. She was looking at her phone the whole time. Hey, stop jumping on the bed! Who are you, old man? Old man? I'm not old. The boy ignored me, ran to a dresser, and kicked it. And he started punching the mirror. Hey, that's enough. What do you think you're doing? Nothing, I'm just bored. This is fun. Anger level 30%. You can't damage the furniture just because you're bored. Stop it. After hearing me yelling, Hillary also came to the boy. No, stop that, please. Shut up, old lady. I'm not old. Hey, you. Just because you're a kid doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. Where's your mother? What? What did my Patrick do this time? Are you his mother? Look at all the damages your son did. Oh, and then? And then? Are you serious? Okay, okay. I'll pay for the damages, all right? How much is it? How much? Do you have any idea how expensive these are? Yeah, we'll pay the damages. My family is so rich, this is nothing. Anger level, 60%. Aren't you feeling sorry at all? Do you know how much trouble you've caused at this store? But he's just a kid. Isn't it enough that I compensate the store for the damages? I'll pay as much as you want, but there's no way we'll apologize. How can you say that? Did you have fun, Patrick? Yeah! I love breaking things! How can you be so proud of yourself? In the end, neither the mother nor the son apologized. The mother just handed Hillary her credit card. How much in total? 
I'll pay for everything with this card. I'll calculate now. Please wait a moment. Hey! That kid wandered off again! While his mother waited impatiently for Hillary to calculate the total, the boy went somewhere. Okay, I've paid for the damages. Are you satisfied now? Yes, you paid for the damages. But you should have stopped him before he damaged the furniture. Wow, you just won't stop. I've already paid, so it's over. Uh, I can't believe I have to throw those pieces away. We just received them today. I'll help you. Jeez, what a day. I was heartbroken seeing all the pretty furniture destroyed by the kid. And then Mark came upstairs. Wow, this bed is so nice too. Great colors and so smooth. What an amazing piece. Hi, honey. What are you doing here? What? Honey? Michelle! I came here to see the new arrivals. Charlie, this is my wife, Michelle. What? She's your wife? Huh? Do you know my hubby? Don't be rude. This is Charlie. He works at the company. Oh. Mark's wife started to get really nervous. I guess she didn't want her husband to find out what had happened earlier. It'd be difficult to tell her husband, who loves and works with furniture every day, that his son had damaged the furniture pieces on display. A great idea suddenly came to me. Mark, there's a piece of furniture I want to show you. See you later, Michelle. I looked for the kid and led Mark to the third floor. When we got there, his son was destroying more furniture and got more violent. I'm gonna destroy everything! My parents are rich anyway! Anger level 100%. I knew he'd still be damaging the furniture. This is not tolerable. I need to teach this kid a lesson. Time to trouble bust him! Oh my God, Mark. Is that child who's breaking the furniture your son? What? Stop! Patrick, what are you doing? Oh? Hey, Dad! Why are you damaging the furniture? I was just playing! You idiot! Mark got so angry and slapped the kid. Don't you know those things are for sale? Even if they're not, didn't I teach you to cherish things? Mark raised his voice and scolded his son furiously, and his son started crying hysterically. Honey, what did Patrick do? Michelle, why didn't you watch him? He was doing terrible things. Oh, <laughs> was he being naughty again? He's just a kid, just let him be. Let him be? This is not a joke. Sorry to interrupt. But the boy already destroyed some pieces before this. Your wife already paid for the damaged furniture. Really? Has he already broken something else? That idiot! Mark was so enraged and scolded his wife and son. So they just kept crying while listening to my boss. Apparently it was not their first time breaking display items at stores. Mark makes a lot of money, so the family lives a luxurious life. But his wife and son somehow grew a habit of going into shops and breaking things on purpose. His wife would also disrespect the store employees when paying for the damaged items. No matter how rich people are, I'll never understand such a hobby. It's my fault that I'm always so busy. I should have spent more time with you. Still, breaking things just because you're bored is absolutely unacceptable. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm canceling your credit cards. Use your own money to pay for the damages. Mark was infuriated and made his wife pay for all the damaged items. Later, I heard that Mark had divorced his wife. Since Mark got custody of their son, his wife not only had to reimburse the money paid for the damaged furniture, but she also had to pay him child support. There was punishment for his son, too. His son had to make furniture and tablewares by hand all summer to learn the value of things. 
His son learned how hard it is to make things from scratch and understood why it's important to cherish things. Charlie, my son has changed. He won't even break his toys now. That's great! I was too busy with work, so I gave them money to compensate. Now I realize how wrong I was. At least you taught your son a valuable lesson. Yeah. I want Patrick to understand being wealthy doesn't mean he can do whatever he likes. He needs to learn to cherish the smallest things in life. It'd be nice if your son becomes interested in interior design someday. Mark's son changed a lot after the incident. Even though he's still young, he should learn to cherish rather than destroy things. I hope Mark can always remind his son of the importance of respect so he can grow up cherishing a lot of things in life. Trouble Busters! The name's Alex. Today's my third wedding anniversary with my wife, Megan. I took a day off to come home one day early from the extended business trip I was on. My plan was to decorate the house, cook dinner, and surprise her when she got home. However, when I got home, I found shoes of an unknown man next to my wife's shoes at the door. I started to have a bad feeling, so I walked quietly into the house, heard voices from the bathroom, and then saw their clothes scattered around outside. Apparently, my wife was having an affair. I even heard music coming from inside the bathroom. My wife always plays music on our waterproof phone while taking a bath. Guess this time was no different. So I went back to the living room and texted her, pretending I didn't know anything. Hey, what are you up to? Working, of course. What happened? Did your business trip get extended? Are you not home? Of course not. I'm at work. I'll message you after work if there's nothing urgent now. Surprise! I'm home early for our anniversary. Wait, what? Did I surprise you? I'm gonna set up decorations, make dinner, and surprise you with more things. So, you're home already? Where exactly? The living room? The bedroom? <laughs> You'll see when you get home. Oh, okay. I'm so excited, I can't wait. I'll ask my boss if I can go home early then. Sounds great. It'd be nice if you could. Can you get a cake for the celebration? The cake might be sold out soon. Now? Why don't you go buy it now? Well, honey, I've already got a cake from your favorite bakery. It's all set. Oh, okay. Maybe you can go grab some. Don't worry. I made sure we have everything. You'll be off in two hours, right? Get your work done quickly and be ready for our celebration. Alex, um... No more spoilers. See you soon. During the next two hours of my supposed preparation, not a single sound came from the bathroom. I tried my best to act normal as if nothing happened. I was even humming songs while decorating and cooking. If I broke down and started crying, my wife would know that I found out about her affair. And I'd feel sorry for myself, too. All that I wanted at the moment was to make them suffer. Two hours later, I received a message from my wife. Guess she couldn't stand the cold anymore, so she decided to give up hiding. Hey, honey, you off now? Well, Alex? Dinner will be ready very soon. Also, I've invited your friends. What? My friends are coming? They should be here in about five minutes. Are you close now? I'm sorry, Alex. I'm so sorry. What's wrong? The truth is, I didn't go to work today. I've been home. Where were you? In the bathroom. You were in the bathroom the whole time? What for? You didn't shower for a week or something? No. Come out then. Well, actually... Uh... I know everything. I noticed as soon as I got home. Come out now. And Carl, too. Your lips must have turned blue from the cold. They both came out wrapped in towels with their faces and lips blue. Because I already took their clothes away, there was nothing for them to wear. But the room was warmed up so they wouldn't catch colds. They came into the living room and kept on apologizing. I made them sit at the dining table in front of the food I made wholeheartedly. All I wanted was to celebrate our wedding anniversary. But look at what they did! If you want to be lovey-dovey in the bathroom so much, you may as well just live in the bathroom for the rest of your lives! Hey, Alex, how did you know his name? I found his driver's license and business cards on the floor where your clothes were scattered. He's your boss at work, isn't he? What do you have to say for yourself? You can't get away with this. Um... I'm so sorry. My lawyer's going to take care of this. I want a divorce and alimony. 
Divorce? No. Is there any way we can talk about this? Do you really think there's still a chance for you? I'm sorry. Um, I know the chances are slim, but I can give you all my savings. There's about $100,000 in my account, so... So what? Please, do not tell my family or the company about this. No need. You pay me the market price, and I tell your family and company. Please don't! My son was just born, and he needs me! Do you think you can just get on with your life? Today I came home early, thinking that my wife and I were going to celebrate a wonderful wedding anniversary. Now look at this! The two of you have ruined my life! How dare you ask for forgiveness! I... I'm really sorry. I don't have the energy to talk with you two anymore. Now you can finish all the food here on the table. What? what? I made it with all my heart for you, Megan. Then the two of you ruined the mood. I also had to call your friends at the last minute. I told them that the dinner was canceled because you were in a bathtub with another man. You did? Who did you tell? I told our common friends. Dylan, Yasmin, Alice, Mika, and Stanley. Is there a problem? Anyways, the dishes are getting cold. Hurry up and finish them. All of these? Yes. You're not going to make me throw these away, are you? There's a giant cake, too. Oh, why don't we pop some champagne? I'm sure you guys would love some. I didn't give them their clothes back until they finished all the food. After saying stuff like, thank you for the dinner, I'm sorry for what happened, and the food was delicious, they ran away as fast as they could. The next day, I hired a lawyer to help me get compensations from them both. The Carl guy got fired, and his wife moved back to her parents' home with the baby. Apparently, he's had a history of having affairs with married women, as well as sexual harassment in the company. It wasn't easy for me, but I managed to get over it. Now I can finally live in peace. Trouble Busters!